Welcome back, everybody. We rejoin our hero, Harkin, as we just defeated the commander, picked up his great shield, and I think I'm actually going to work on equipping that. It weighs a whopping four and a half units, but if we take off the symmetry helm and switch over the symmetry leggings to the regular live elements, or maybe, let me see, we use fate instead. Could, would that work? Yes, if we just focus on using Fate instead, we can actually make this work. It's a really cool looking character. That's one of the great things about this game is that Stand aside. Uh, the armor always I'm looks fantastic. For a man named Kazlo. Wait. I know you. You're supposed to be in prison. Your crimes are well known. Well, long time no see, Captain, but uh actually that guard looks like he's in for Quite the trouble to um, make it. Encounter. A Rogar Lord nearly ripped him in two. Kazlo's injuries. Sounds about were. right. I need to find him. Kazlo's injuries were taken care of in the Citadel. Now he's after something called a pathway. That's Check the pathway the again. By the graveyard. Now get out of my Let's way. go do that. This man needs help. Yeah, yeah, he does. But I, I need to get into the Citadel, Citadel. though. Uh, if you Maybe could, uh, let's pass. Kazlo was roughed up enough times to trust you. But one look at you reminds me of what you are. I'm not letting you in. He's looking for the Rogar's incursion point into the old monastery. Go to the graveyard. You have enemies here, and they're not all Rogar. Now move, and steer well clear of me and my men. Clearly not the most friendly of fellows, so uh, we're going to ignore him. Sadly, he locked us out of the Citadel here, but... No matter, there's still plenty for us to go about. There is a challenge portal unlocked by killing the commander right over there, but we're not going to be doing that just yet. There's quite a lot of other things to get to before we take I on that challenge portal. Tower on the other side of the graveyard. It's suicide, but, but I have no other choice. This is our only hope for help. There is still a place help can come from. That soldier I just took down is one of the really annoying enemies in this game if you're not using a light character because you really have to either wait on him to make a move and then react to that. There we go. That was beautiful. But you have to wait on him to react and react to his movements or you have to be able to parry him which is impossible if you're not able to wield the buckler time. or just don't have the one at the time. The in front of the monastery and demand sanctuary. We can't let any more in. We will starve to death. Antanas ordered us to close the gate, and I understand his reasons, but these are people. He's supposed to be the savior. You can technically deal with these guys if you have a tower shield because uh, you can bash through their shield and remain unfazed which is one of the really game-breaking points of Lords of the Fallen, is that shield bashing with the tower shield only bashes the enemy shield out of the way instead of your own as well, which you can take very uh, uh, heavy advantage of in order to cheese certain enemies like these soldiers here who would normally pose quite the threat, at least in a group of two like that, but if you just manage your shield dashes appropriately, you can kind of take them out. The real way that you should be dealing with these soldiers is to learn their parry timings, but we haven't been given a parry shield just yet into the game, so we kind of need to pick one of those up before we can face them in any really fair combat. So, sadly, that's the way things have got to be. We've got another one of these sleeping Rogar, as you can tell by his... Hood. We're going to need to kill him again. But now that that's out of the way, we can scale this tower over here and work on getting ourselves a buckler, which is coming up in not too long, not too long indeed. And there's that sun getting in the way again. But it's not going to save these two archers over here. They're sitting ducks once I've scaled my way on up, and I can drop all the way down here. The Marauder here is very, very blind. Just incredibly so. It's almost impossible to get it to see you before you attack, so just a really easy kill. And from here, we are led to this final section of the pathway, which leads back around to the beginning 
and gives you both of the other shields that you didn't start with. Which is one of the great things about this game is that uh, at one point in the game or another you get all the starting equipment that it's everyone else gets. Night on watch. The first three have been quiet, except for the rumors that spread among us. Rumors about the Rogar. They are nowhere to be seen. But there's a glow on the horizon. The villages are burning, and the fire may creep closer. I don't think it will be quiet much longer. I was going to try to parry him, and then I failed it horribly, but that, that second encounter, that's how you're supposed to deal with those guys. And coming across from that, you can pick up the Bloody Flint, which you can use on the pyre up on top of this tower in order to gain a mighty little boon of experience, as well as activating a little bit of an event for later on in the game. This will actually call soldiers to reinforce the monastery uh, for a little bit later in the game when that becomes relevant. And it also sets up an ambush for you in the moment, but it's a little bit buggy. There's supposed to be two of those vanguards that come up to get you, but one of them uh, kind of waits behind until you come out of any sort of challenge portal nearby, which is a little bit of an issue. Like I've said before, the game isn't perfect. There's quite a few bugs, but I wouldn't say it's game-breaking by any stretch. It's just kind of annoying. And now we get to slap our shield back on and head into this challenge portal to sort this all out. This one is going to be an actual darkness challenge. There are three sets of challenge portals. There's the loot rooms, there's the darkness challenges, and then there's arenas. And we'll get to see arenas up next, but not until we've beaten another boss. So we come over here, there's a bunch of enemies layered about and only a few real sources of light for us to see what's going on with. So it can be very difficult to get your bearings and they really take advantage of that more and more as the game progresses with more and more twisted challenge rooms and stranger and stranger objectives that kind of rely on you adapting to the room around you. In this first uh, challenge portal that they kind of expect you to get because it's after the boss rather than beforehand, there's a simple pair of chests. One gives you Kamar, which is a fantastic faith weapon if you can get the uh, faith to use it. It takes a full 20 faith to use correctly, but at the same time it also does really nice damage. And the other thing about this portal is that it's kind of here to introduce you to the idea that enemies can spawn at different times within these challenge portals. Because this Rogar Marauder and this one, and as well as the archer behind him, don't actually spawn until you approach this second lighted area. Which makes for quite the nice ambush, especially since you need to activate that second lighted area in order to fully clear this challenge portal, because you need to step on this here stone in order to open one of the chests that was, quote, hidden in the sort of fog of war that abounds in these sorts of challenge portals. And while it only has a small little reward inside, it's still worthwhile to grab since you get the experience of killing the enemies behind it as well. Activating that challenge portal has respawned all of the enemies around, which means I get to show you the proper way to use a buckler to take on one of these soldiers, assuming I can nail the timing this time, which is certainly not a guarantee. Or he could just walk away from me and give me a free backstab. That's that's fine too. Don't worry though, I will get plenty of time to show you the proper buckler usage very quickly because there's actually another side area I'm going to be heading down before the next boss in order to gain a bunch... Ooh, ouch. That's the vanguard from earlier. Like I said, activating the ambush with the pyre spawns two of these vanguards. One of which only really uh, reliably comes after you, after you've exited a challenge portal. So he kind of got the sneak up on me because I'd forgotten about him because it's such a busted mechanic, but oh well. I can take him out. And as you saw, that's kind of how you take advantage of the shield bash attack, is that you can 
knock enemies onto their backs long enough to get off a free attack, which really reduces the uh, risks and benefits of having a slow weapon like an axe or a hammer, because you can start the encounter with the enemy staggered, which is by far a completely unfair advantage. But we're not going to worry about that too much. This Juggernaut, however, is another one of those enemies that's very difficult to take out if you don't know how to do it. Just like the soldier, any uh, enemy with a great shield like this can be taken out in one of two ways, reliably at least. Oh, come on. You, a, you can parry them, and these juggernauts actually have an incredibly easy and consistent parry timing, or you can use a tower shield to shield bash them while you're running and take care of them that way. But I find that that's a very cheap way to go about it since that tactic actually kills pretty much everything in the game and requires zero skill. So I try and avoid it if at all possible. I really messed up the parry there, but that's gonna be okay. I can come in and deal some heavy damage after he's done with that. Come on, there we go. And I can slap him down afterwards. This is one of those sleeping Rogar, meaning he has a little bit of extra health. Oh, come on. That second hit should not have gotten me. But it also means that I have to take him out a second time. And the reason we're coming over here will become apparent right after I killed this guy. With a quick three chops. Oh, I messed that up really badly. Oh, dear. Looks like I'm going to be using up all my health potions, but that's not going to be too big of an issue. Let's heal on up before we engage this guy. And as you can see, there's that chest over there that's going to require a rune in order to open, but it's easily worth it because of what's inside. There we go. There we go, and that's what I wanted. Get a nice little backstab to take him down and make it a little bit easier to take him out when he's coming on up. Because that guy's one of these strong Rogar, which have about 300 hit points and deal an immense amount of damage for the early game, but slotting a rune over here is going to give us both the Guardman as well as a bottle. The Guardman is a Great Axe, which I believe takes 18 strength, 20 strength, but has quite a lot of damage and actually functions better than most shields for blocking. And last but not least over here on this path is a pair of Juggernauts. Oh dear. I did not want to aggro them at once, but okay, fine. We're gone. We're, we're leaving. It's been fun, guys. You enjoy your time together. I'm going to be over here where you guys can't get me. So uh, <laughs> I did not mean to aggro them at both at the same time, and I messed up the first parry, so we're just not going to have anything to do with that. Instead, going to rest up at this here checkpoint, get a ton of levels because we want to be able to use Cleric for the next, for the next fight. And from here, we're going to head on over there as well because we don't have actually all that much left to do. It's time to meet Kazlo in the graveyard and that is what I intend to do. So let's get our faith all the way up to 18 and we want to increase our endurance by a lot as well because we're really going to need more quit burden and stamina if we're going to pull this off. So let's start re-equipping ourselves. We, mm hmm, let's see, what, what do I have? Do I have any attribute point shards? I do not, okay. I was considering maybe I could get the Kamar as well, but no, it doesn't look like that's in the cards. So for now, we're just going to switch basically out to the Cleric for most of the time. We're not going to be using Fate anymore because Persistence is generally better. And I believe that we also need to switch up our armor some. Let's see. Symmetry for the head. Oh, we do want the Commander Shield. Alive Elements is fine. Symmetry Hands. Symmetry can we get symmetry body? We cannot, so this is the heaviest armor we can get. And with all of this equipped, we're going to head down this pathway once more. And I'll show you what hammers can do. Hammers are one of my favorite weapon types in the entire game. They're just so powerful. And the way that they're used is very satisfying because 
honestly, you never want to be using them one-handed since their two-handed moveset is just so much better. It comes out at about the same speed and has just a ridiculous amount of extra damage, as well as their single best attack in the entire game, their two-handed charged attack, which does incredible damage. You saw that hit for, what, 231? Even the AoE shockwave that comes out at the end was enough to kill this guy outright. Which is one of the other great things about hammers is that their two-handed heavy attacks have a little AoE that pops out at the end, which, much like the persistence, uh, yeah, the great swords, uh, can two-hit bosses, which it deals a large amount of damage. Well, not just bosses, but also any sort of elite creature that's big enough to sort of outlast the initial blow. And so they are very, very good weapons for cracking armor. And there we go. This soldier is going to give us a few problems, but no matter. There we go. Oh, come on. Let's see if we can dash behind him. We can't. I'm done. I'm done. It is annoying that there are really only two ways of beating them, aside from just constantly circling around and trying to fish for a backstab, but uh, that's just how some of the enemies in this game were designed, and while it's, the game's not perfect, I definitely think that the combat is absolutely fantastic in this game. Coming down the secret way, we get a bottle and this and note, forgotten. which is very important. Gladly will I care for the dead until the day I join them. Should I ever feel insecure, I know that I can retreat into one of the graveyard's sacred shrines. They will yes, shield me sacred off shrines. from evil. For they were built at the time when Keystone was erected to repel creatures from other worlds, lest they want to come close to our buried heroes. Creatures from other worlds, you say? I believe I've met one of them right now. And I'm going to wreck it with my fancy schmancy new hammer. Can roll out of the way of all of his scythe swings. This was a little bit of a tricky boss to figure out my first time playing the game, because I didn't quite understand what was happening here. After you when take him down each of the uh, health bars, he will begin this move. And that AoE hits the entire battlefield for more than your health bar. Which is just incredibly silly. And the only way to survive it is to sit pretty in one of these little shrines. He will also summon minions to come and attack you, but no matter what, that ridiculous shadow AoE of his will kill them off for you. And if you actually get him to do that, that's how you get the unique version of his weapon. So it's kind of nice that they set that up for you if you know what you're doing. But figuring that out as a new player is just silly because unless you found the secret path to come down here, you didn't get the, oh, get the roll, not quite. Uh, both of those rolls were bad. As you can see, I wasn't really using my great shield, but that's because this guy is part magic damage, which means that the shield doesn't block all of its damage. Either way, I can wreck him, and that's the boss for this area. It's a bit melodramatic, I must say, but boy, is that a great feeling whenever you take down one of these bosses. You get this really cool scene. It feels so impactful. I'm not really sure what those little fireballs are. I th again, it's probably just absorbing the experience of the fallen foe because it has nothing to do with the enemy being Rogar. But there we have it. We have killed Worshiper, which is one of the funniest things for me in this game is that they missed a P in spelling Worshipper, so <laughs> I always have to make fun of that, but dotted around this graveyard here is a bunch of free little items, namely human skulls, as well as a uh, audio log or two. I think I accidentally picked up one of those in the middle of the fight, which was certainly not how I wanted to do things, but I guess it'll save us some time from having to wait for that. The graveyard has been plundered. The most damage is around the grave of this murderer. Skinner. Was it the work of a thief, 
Or has the murderer risen from his grave? Nobody believes me, but this cursed soul needs to be put to rest. Caslo, buddy old pal, I will talk to you in a minute. Because I have some more important things to do. Not least of which being to gather some loot. This challenge portal isn't till much later, but as always, we'll deal with that when the time comes. Cleric is gonna bash its way through this section. Oh, just out of reach. Come on. There we go. And I get the follow-up. But for these guys, ooh, didn't want to get hit by that, but I managed to block it even if it was with my weapon. These guys are incredibly annoying, and if you come down without uh, traveling that secret path around, they, you actually find them here and fight them about here-ish on the path. And I'll be honest, my first time playing through the game before I figured out how to fight them properly, I died to them about 10 times in a row. They are just that fast and horrible if you don't know how to fight them. But we want to enter this challenge portal over here. This is one of those challenge portals I was talking about that are arenas. You can activate the pedals, <laughs> pedestal, pedal, whatever you want to call it in the center, uh, three different times in order to activate different rounds of a fight. And once you've completed all three, you're rewarded quite heavily. Oh dear. I suppose I should be fair and uh, discuss like the, oh dear. Uh, come on, I need to get one of them to attack me so that they can split up because that's the only real scary thing about this first round is that they're together from the very beginning. As you can see, I kind of messed that up. The one way to actually kill these guys without cheesing them is to attack them immediately when they're about to attack you, and you can actually get your sprinting attack to go off first, which means that if you have a strong weapon like Cleric here, which is just so powerful, you can actually kill them outright before the hits manage to land. So instead of it turning into a trade, you just get the kill shot. But for anyone who doesn't have a weapon that powerful, you do have to resort to one of the other methods or by trading with him, and neither of which is particularly good. Other than uh, enemies that have shields in this game, it's really great about giving you uh, enemies that you can engage at your own will and kind of sneak damage into and whatnot, but any enemy that has a great shield like this coming up Juggernaut is just the absolute dickens and kind of spoils the game a little bit. <laughs> then again, it's always cool watching my character parry one of these guys because they just go flying and that is so satisfying. But that is round three and for doing all of that I can activate this pedestal one more time and acquire a fancy schmancy golden chest inside of which is one of the best items for any heavy armor wearers in the game. The backbreaker, as well as a pair of point shards, which we will be making use of once we get back to Kaz... No, we're going to make use of those now because we're going to take a break here and this is going to be where I end it. But before I do, I want to at least put those points in places. So activate both of those shards and we're actually going to get a chance to show you some of the spells as well because I'm going to put some points into my spell casting and the rest goes into points. I'm going to put those two into faith so that I can wield Kamar and I'm going to put my spell points into shelter which is a rather incredible spell that we will have a little bit more time to acquaint ourselves with next time. So thank you all so much for watching. It's been a great time playing this game, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Have a great day, everybody.